I've never met anyone like you. Same here. Hello, miss. You look beautiful tonight. Thank you. He's a lucky old coot. No, he's married. Couple kids. You're going to get me into trouble, little gummit. You need me to remind you how well known Kate and Tilly are. How killing him be the act of a short sighted galoot who didn't value his neck. You want someone to tell you what's what, Norman Brune? That's what. Nah, go out and arrest him. Are your men are you prepared to stand in court, swear it was Brown who cut him? I know it's toilsome, but we've got a common problem here. You got an idea, do you, Jess? Yeah, we're scared him off, shoot him in the knee. Both knees. Just kill him. You want to bring every copper in Sydney down on us? You want me to shoot Norman Brown? You're the gunman, all right, you, Frankie? Mrs. Brown. My condolences. Did he say anything? Did he, uh, he tell you who shot him? No, he didn't. I wouldn't tell you if he had. The 1920s were a pretty violent era. Slashings, punch-ups, shootings, knifings. But strangely, not that many murders. Until Norman Brun came up from Melbourne and upset the apple cart. His brutal murder was a signal event for the police, for his gang, and especially for Kate Lee and Tilly Devine. If you don't marry Devine, you get out of the sack and get out here. Door, come in there and black your fucking eye! What? I want you to tell me why Frank Green, a kitty, wouldn't pull up his own socks unless someone else told him to. Why he thought to put five rounds into Norman Brune last night. Because someone with guts told him to. We agreed. You, me, Jeff's your hubby. We agreed that Brune was just getting a bullet in the leg. I'm not listening to you, Captain. What do you think is going to happen now, you silly? Do you know what you've done? You fucking bet I know what I've done. A bullet in the leg wasn't going to stop Norman Broom. Would have just given him a limp and pissed him off. Well, you've left two kids fathers. His blood's on your hands. Oh, you piss off, you smug, ugly slag. you got no idea what I've done for us. You should be on your knees kissing me fucking toes. Rabido! Left. Rabido! Right. Rabido! Left. Right. Morning. Morning. We've lost a customer. Yeah, who? No, no, bullshit bugger from Melbourne. Braun? What about him? There's just saying, since last night, you ain't gonna be partaking of fruit and flesh now, more. What's from Barry for me? Touch so much as a grape, I'll top your hand off. Rabbit O! Walking me home for being there. You're gonna be right. Yeah. No, no. Come in. Uh, uh, no.
asks. I was home all night. Frankie, they get in stir. Do something bad enough. They face a firing squad. Or the nurse. You're crowded. My wife's got a persuasive mouth, but you're still gonna do the right thing. You follow my orders, not hers. Do you understand me? <coughs> See, how's it feel? A bit sore. I know, I mean, too, if you know. Pop the kid. Told you I was the gunman. I knew you had it in you. You watch yourself, mate. Cops are crawling all over this like balance. Thanks, mate. Keep it up if you're good looking. Oi! Where's your mother? Brown's been shot. You know nothing about her. It's a dangerous world. Bugger eyes around with me, Kate. This isn't a bashing or an agy badgy over a couple of quid. A man has been murdered. I told you that Norman Broom was a problem. I told you something needed to be done about him. So what were your whereabouts on the night in question? Can't remember nothing. You don't recall the small matter of five shots being let off in your boss? Don't have a boss. You deny you're a member of Norman Brune's gang? Norman who? <laughs> Why'd you go drinking with him at Max? Max on Charlotte Lane. Never been there. <laughs> Is that the best you got? You wouldn't want to try my best. Mr. Brum was dropped by taxi at Max in the company of a man he called Snowy. Moreover, the public and where you've been drinking earlier, he's identified you as one of Mr. Brum's most intimate and regular friends. You know what I think, Mr. Snowy, Catmore? I think you led your boss into a trap that night. I think you wanted Mr. Brum dead so you could get a bigger slice of his grubby standoffer pie. Oh, that Norman Brum. Was his loyal fucking deputy. So if it wasn't you who pulled the trigger, who was it? Mr. Moffat, you've been driving a cab around here for years, right? Well, you'd be aware that several well-known underworld identities frequent this area. German Tilly Devine, Kate Lee, Phil the Jew. These men outside Marx last night. Do you recognize them as associates of any of these people? Oh, well, there's a lot of likely lads about these days. So wear their hats pulled low. Fred. Did any of them say anything? One of the ones that come up the street? He told me to get out of there. Right, right, so he told you to leave. You best push off, he said. Twice. Like he knew something was up. Could be a job for Constable Blissett. Ray Blissett was a man you wanted on your side. Big, brave, incorruptible. If he hit you, you stayed hit. If he clobbered you, you stayed clobbered. He was Bill Mackay's one-man army, and he single-handedly rounded up the usual suspects.
Whatever happened to Mum? Or an anchor? Need you to accompany down to the station, mate. Come when I'm ready. You ready? So you're a tip man, eh? Fuck off, Gaffney. Come on. Come here! Stop it. Hats. Hats! Now, which one of you little birdies shot Norman Brune, eh? We're set. very alike. Just take a good look at each one. It was very dark. I'm, I'm a bit short-sighted. What if they say something? You. Say your best push off. You best push off. You. You best push off. <laughs> you best push off. Wife says I'm a bit hard of hearing too, you know. the last time you saw Norman Brown? The day he died. I saw every single bit of him. Did he seem worried? Talk about his enemies? Cover yourself, for God's sake. Selling yourself is a dangerous game, Nellie. Who's going to look after you now Norman's gone? I can look after myself. You're better off going back to work for Tilly Devine. At least you'd have some protection. Better off still if you went home. I'm having fun. Constable Armfield, who, who shot Norman? That's a range of suspects. Anyone in particular? You've probably had fun with them all. So what have you heard? Hey, everyone's talking about it. Hey, um, you haven't, uh, you haven't got any snow, do you now? Tilly's making me work 12 hour shifts. I'm a bit sleepy. So you're gonna keep working here then? No, I'll be right. Ah, you're a gamer. So Gwyn, what's the word? Oh, who shot Norman Brun? Well, Peg heard from Aggie, who was doing a special with Tom Kelly. But it was someone called the gunman. So Norman was shot by someone called the gunman. That's Greg Gaffney, right? Greg the gunman Gaffney. Yeah, yeah. Oh wait, no, I got it wrong. It weren't the gunman. It were it were the little gunman. Thanks. Okay, here's this for your troubles. Now don't you take it. All right, I know your mum. I know where to find you. Off you go. Run along. Go on, run!
While Norman Bruin might have been problem solved, there was still the ongoing problem of his Razor Gang. Tonight we're turning over the tour. Get ourselves some boodle together. Get some shooters. Fix Divine and Lee for good. Norm used his dying breath to anoint you, boss, did he? You got a problem with that? He's admiring your democratic process. Who was it, Snow? Who knocked him? I told you already, I didn't see. Bulls, Bull. You was there. From now on, there's no more pussyfooting. We're gonna get rid of the bitches. Get ourselves rich. If you lads wanna get on, you'll stick with me. I'm kicking the shit out of this stupid city. No one's gonna stop me. Yeah. So I don't know about that. Hello, fellas. Having a little wake, are we? Don't mind me. Keep, keep chatting among yourselves. Pretend I'm not here. Bugger this. You know the best time I ever had? The war. In you know, all the blood, mud. I reckon I had a better time with the Huns than I ever had here. Mates stuck by mates. Yeah. Stick with me then, Jack. I'm your ticket to the glorious future. Cheer up, will ya? Norm's dead and we don't have to see the gloomy bastard take the lion's share of everything we graft no more. Your abject grief for the man is very moving, Snowy. You wouldn't happen to have a hand in the tragic events of the other evening now, would you? What do you think? Well, if you'd been shot in the back, I'd know for sure. I fought a war for the glorious future of this country. If you're the best it's got to offer, I was wasting bloody time. Frank Razor Jack Hayes was the first of Norman's gang to break ranks. He stowed away on a freighter bound for the bright lights and great future of the Weimar Republic and was never heard from again. Played it a dozen times already tonight. Oh, I'm playing. Playing. Ah, oh, ring tonight. Was an old favorite. Play it. Play it. Play it. Play it. Me up every time he come in here. George Wallace left Sydney to avoid a jail term for assault and crossed the country to fair Western Australia. But after trying to pinch one wallet too many, the midnight raper was stabbed in the guts and bled to death outside a public toilet. And what of Norman Bruin's best girl, pretty Nellie Cameron? All she knew was she was fatally attracted to bad men. She didn't know why. How could she? She was still only 16. Evening, sir. Well, I don't know what he's missing out on, eh? How are you, Snow? Number one now. Picking up where Norm left off. And what's his is mine now. His push, his urn, his girl. So how much will I make out of you? Pretty Nelly. I'm gonna go home now. Yeah, what did Norm take? Eight bob out of every ten. Let me go! Ah. Please I'll help bet you're me. worth every penny. <laughs> Don't you like get it? I'm the boss! I am the boss! Next time, I am higher.
Let's get you home. Tim, that's Frank Green, the little gunman. You charge 15 Boba Toss from now on. You're the prettiest girl. She gets home for it. If I asked you where you were the night Norman was killed, what would you say? None of your business. And don't you ever freaking question me again. So now, only one member of Norman Braun's Razor Gang was left to prey on Razorhurst. Snowy Cutmore cut his losses in Sydney and took himself back to the city in the south, Melbourne, where opportunity was knocking, because his old foe, Squizzy Taylor, was already under threat as Melbourne's number one gangster. I'm making you your favourite. Mm. <laughs> Roast lamb and peas. But Snowy didn't plan on a bout of the flu or on Squizzy's first in, best dressed attitude. Not to be a scheme and waste of space, you traitorous fucking brain. No, 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 squeeze, please. Give me a chance. Chance for what? For what? Fucking do you first, you little... Joseph Leslie Theodore Squizzy Taylor died a few hours later in hospital, and John Snowy Cutmore never got to eat his favourite tea. The Inspector General of Police wasn't too thrilled with the rampant slashings and unsolved shootings on the streets of Darlinghurst. He expected a result, and that Bill Mackay would deliver it. Norman Brand's razor gang has gone the way of all flesh. We still have to solve this murder to catch his killer. Show that Darlinghurst is not a lawless town. We've questioned everyone associated with Jeff's, the Devines, and Lee. They've all got alibis. 
the Middle East provided by themselves. So what's the plan? I think it's time we took a leaf out of Norman Brand's book. when you see one. It's broken. Oh, it's Swiss made. Have a look at the silver mark. Thank you for your kind introduction. We're here investigating the murder of Mr Norman Brown. We've got a few questions. You're under arrest for supplying alcohol during prohibited hours. Bill needed to break the code of silence, and his tactics to achieve it were rather like Norman Bruins. He was going to disrupt Kate's business until she turned informant. Arrest wasn't a problem for Kate. She could afford bail, afford lawyers, afford fines. The problem was that Bill Mackay and his troops turned up at one or other of her sly grog joints night after night, and always with the name Norman Bruin on their lips. And Kate knew exactly who she blamed for that. Bloody Tilly, bloody divine. Yeah, our takings were down 50% this week thanks to the bonds of favours to us by knocking Broon. Yeah, punters don't want coppers breathing into their beers. Funny that. I'm not going to pay her back with some. Yeah. Mackay's going to make the grog hard work. We have to expand the snow. I feel the juice that he can supply me with as much as I can shift. How many blocks you got, Simon? Half a dozen. I need some more. I could rustle you up a few lads. <laughs> the lads you know look like you, well. Tops from the suburbs buying Angie want to think they're a cut above such undesirables. No. Only one good looker so we can for you now, eh? Yeah. I'm sick of your ugly mug. What? <sighs> Two birds, one stone. Come oh, look at them lightweight woolens. Yeah, 12 and 6 a yard, but. What about them sheeny fox? I love that green. And what is it? 39 and 6. Whew. How many blades would you have to service before you could afford that? You've been working all day. What does Tilly let you keep, huh? Five bob of every twenty? Four? Three? Wouldn't it be nice to work for someone who doesn't take such a big bite of your own? Hm? We ain't discussing our financial affairs with you, Mrs. Lee. Come on, girls. Wouldn't you love not having to worry every month about getting in the bumpy way? Hmm? About some sweaty bloke giving you the pox? This ain't a good idea. Don't be such a killjoy. <laughs> What's wrong with having what the rich folk have? Hmm? I don't know, girls. It's a nasty old world. Best enjoy it while you can. Don't take that tone with me. Why? Don't take that tone with her. The lady wants to dance. It's pretty stiff not to oblige her. Crapetti, isn't it? It's Calais. Right. Fuck off and keep your dago nose to yourself. Frank! Front and center. Go home. You still going to the dance? Go home. I'll meet you there.
belong to the little gunman now, do you? Looks after me, yes. Maroon, green. When are you going to find yourself a man with a bit of real color? Just a dance. Something special to add to your night? Lovely snowy white it is, and only five shillings a snifter. Where's Peg and Beth? Good, yeah? Yeah, brilliant. Blokes think they're selling one thing and stay for the other. Good girls. Uh -huh. You want to land? You shut your mouth. <laughs> shut your mouth. Poaching me girls, eh? That's a new low even for a slut from double. Come here! Ah! 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 They can work for Kate if they want. And you fucking owe her anyway. Trouble you've caused. Fuck up, you want trouble, really? Come here! Constable Blizzard, isn't it? <clears throat> What's a bloke who bashes up people for a living doing in here? Same as you. Having a chat with the Almighty. Listen to you, does he? Answer your prayers? South's have won a few premierships of late, so... I'm not complaining. What are you asked for? I'm not going to use 
this is against you, don't worry. I was brought up Methodist. I just got engaged and my fiance, she's a staunch me. So here I am, learning me new dogmas. What do you pray for? Guidance. This is late. Candle. Who's that for? Norman Brown. Look for some fun day. So what might hardly fair, what? Why was Nugget on his own? Why was he on his own? Where was Frank? Getting the night off. Oh, Jesus, Jim, how fucking thick are you? And so it went. Tilly slash Kate's people, Kate slash Tilly's. And their personal feud fed on the blood of others. No one was safe. Stood you up, has he? He's following me, Mr. Coletti. Yeah. Wanna know why? Because I want to have you, Nelly. I want to own you. I want to have you and watch other blokes have you and take their money from them. And no matter how much they spend on you or how much they fuck you, I want them to know that they got nothing. Because they don't own you, I do. Fifteen shillings, thanks, mate. Do you wanna? Fine. Fifteen bob. What if I don't wanna pay? Well, then you're pitching for my girl, and I'll drop you for it. I could take you out like that. Oh, Barrow boy, two bit hood. Come on. You know who I am? You know what I've done? You know who I've fixed? Hmm? You know what they call me? They call me. Frank Green lost his spoils of war. Nellie Cameron became Guido Coletti's best girl and meal ticket. But not to worry. Frank would win back pretty Nellie soon enough. The hit on Norman Bruin changed everything for Kate and Tilly. The fallout from his death upped the ante on their rivalry. Plus, they knew they'd got away with murder. The stakes could only rise. We have to obey the law, but they don't. Look at them. Up to their pits and no good. We know they're plotting and scheming. We do nothing about it. Just have to sit here and wait and pick up the fucking pieces. Six o'clock, gentlemen. If you can't drink them, leave them. If you can't leave them, drink them. Fucking stupid law. 